All right, so let's have some fun. What's going on, guys? Um, let me make sure that we're live. Went out for a second there. There was an issue. Uh, let's see here. Sorry about that. Let's just make sure that we're live, and then we're good. All right. All right, we look good. All right, what's going on, guys? Um, welcome back. Welcome back. Today we're talking about seven percent rule. If you're not familiar with that, you should be. If you're trying to learn how to invest in real estate, if you're trying to learn how to flip houses in real estate, uh, you have to learn about seventy percent rule. Okay, there's quite a few uh, variances to it. But let's just talk about it. So my name is Ola. I'm the author of Smart Real Estate Wholesaling, this book right here. I'm also the creator of MyEmpirePro.com and the 11 Days Challenge. Um, you can check out the 11 Days Challenge at 11dayschallenge.com. Uh, it's basically you get up and running in 11 days with uh, your real estate investing business. All right. Um, a, 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 quite a, a big fundamental in the game is after repair value, and um, and the maximum allowable offer. And after repair value, 70% rule, things like that, okay? So um, I wanna take some time to 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 talk about it and, and then share some stuff with you when, with regards to that. Um, there's a lot of uh, new guys, new gurus coming on the scene. I've been in the game since 2005, so uh, I've seen what works and what doesn't work. I know all the nuances. And my biggest fear sometimes is that maybe I know too much. All right. So I'm going to share a spreadsheet here with you um, so we can have a, a real life example of what I'm talking about and why you need to understand this. And don't, don't get swayed. There's a lot of, um, it's a lot of, uh, misinformation out there okay a lot of misinformation out there so uh it's very important that you that you just understand it okay uh understand the concept from a conceptual standpoint and once you understand that then anyone can come up with their own theory i, I would come up with theory sometimes and, and it's okay for you to just put that and say hey you know i don't agree with that you know all right so it's okay for you to say mm, i don't i don't agree with that like because you understand the concept and just 
you want to be in a place where you have your own opinions, basically. All right. It's very, very important that you get into a place where you have your own opinions. Okay. Um, with time and experience, that gets easier. But even now, it's okay for you to have an opinion because you are conceptualizing everything you're learning. Okay. So uh, with that being said, I'm going to share my screen with you here for a second. Some people say, no, it's 65%. Some people say it's 70%. What is that exactly? We're talking about house flipping. We're talking about flipping houses. We're talking about real estate wholesaling. Okay. Um, and fundamentally speaking, the idea is to buy houses and sell houses. Well, buy and sell houses. You cannot just go into the market and the property is worth $200,000 and then buy it for $200,000 and just say, I'm going to, I'm just going to mark it up and just make money. It doesn't work like that. All right. So let me share my screen. And then, so we can have a, a real life example here. Uh, Chrome tab, boom, like that. All right. Awesome. So we have this here now. You should be able to see my screen now. Awesome. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Do me a favor. There's a video that I watched earlier that's blowing up, basically came up on my homepage, a thousand views in like uh, 24 hours. So uh, probably because people are watching it and people are thinking they're learning something. Um, I won't say people are not learning something, but I'm afraid that a lot of newbies will completely misconstrue what the gentleman was trying to say. Basically the guy said, 70% rule is crap and don't do it, all right? Uh, but uh, I beg to defer. It's not crap. It depends on how you use it, just like everything else. Okay, it's an, it's a tool in it's a tool in your toolbox for real estate wholesaling, right? So the idea is here is we we'll buy, right, and we sell, right, right. So if we go look at a property, let me let me see if I can find a piece of property to use as an example here. Let's just say. Let's just say, let's just go look at 555 five, five, um, New Brunswick Avenue, New Brunswick Avenue in Forts. Good one, right? Um, maybe that's not residential. That's not residential in that area. Uh, let's, let's just do Linden Street. How about that? I can see through that, right? So we could say uh, 20 Linden Street in... Uh, 20 Linden Street, right? We're just going to use a random house, right? Let's say uh, you generated a lead. Somebody called you. They have a property at 20 Linden Street, all right? That's a nice piece of property right there, right? And um, and they told you they, they, they want to sell it. You know, a property is well kept, but, you know, they, they're in trouble. They need to downsize. They, they can't afford to hold on to the property. That can happen. Or the chimney is badly damaged and, you know, it needs work. So let's just use the chimney is badly damaged, right? So um, chimney repair, let's say chimney repair, let's see what that costs. Let's see if that's in the market. Chimney repair, right? Let's see chimney repair cost, right? Let's see what that says. Uh, let's see if we can find anything. But uh, so let's use the IR and upwards of. Let's just use four thousand dollars, right? So now we have a, a repair cost. Uh, let me see. Can you guys? You guys probably didn't see my screen so so far, right? Sorry about that. Um, that's okay. Um, I'll make up for it. Okay. Let me see here. Let me see if I can make sure you guys see that. Uh, remove, stop. Let's share the screen again. Uh, let's do applications. All right, let's do that. This is better. <clears throat> All right, so now I can share my all the tabs. So we're looking at this property, 21 Linden, right? Just for example, right? Uh, 21 Linden Street in... Uh, and, uh, you know, chimney repair is about, you know, a total chimney replacement. Let's just say the chimney is damaged and we need a replacement of $10,000, right? So the repair estimate, let's put that right here somewhere really nicely right here. Repair estimate, 
ten thousand dollars we know that that's the only thing the house needs house is in great condition so let's just say maybe some other upgrade here and there you know some sheet rock work whatever let's just call it thirteen thousand dollars right all right so we have a you know this property what is this property worth in the market okay i'm going to share a couple of uh ideas with you let's go here and google that address again linden 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 uh street linden street in uh ford new jersey all right so we're looking at this property and um wait i have the wrong one it's linden street ford right okay so we have another one here i think the other one we had was what i think it's another town maybe Let's see here. All right, so let's use this. Let's. I'm gonna use this. Let's use the one in Ford, right? But I really wanted to use that because we were using the chimney example. Let's see here. Let's go back to. Yeah, it's in Ford. That's the one. Yep, Ford, New Jersey, twenty Linden. Yeah, it's the same one actually. All right, so it says Linden Street. Did I mean Linden Street Ford? Yep, that's what I meant. Yep, that's what I meant. Okay, so I probably typed it wrongly. Yep, so let's let's click this one. Uh, by the way, uh, make sure you give it a thumbs up if you're watching me live. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right, so... Let's take a look at this. Uh, all right, so we have uh, this property. So let's look at what the Zillow says, uh, Zestimate, right? Some people will say Zestimate is not really value. I'm gonna tell you right now, Zestimate is value, okay? Why? Because the market is always right. And the average person on the market right now, maybe three, four years ago, you could say that, the average person on the market, if they Google an address, this is what pops up, and Zestimate, even though it tells you a range, uh, the, the value is in the eyes of the beholder, <laughs> okay? Keep that in mind, okay? It's in the eyes of the beholder. Value is in the eyes. So that wasn't the house, actually. This is uh, this this wasn't the house. This, uh, this came up as a street view. Well... I'll be damned. But anyway, let's just use the, let's just let's just use the example, right? Uh, this is not a real lead, so that's why I'm using it. All right. So it's saying that the property is worth two seventy three thousand dollars. Okay. And we're gonna do a quick assessment, a real comparable assessment here in a second, right? Um, but if you go look at uh, realtalk.com, which I didn't want to click on, but I just did. Uh, it's saying it's worth two seventy three. That's close enough. Anywhere you check and the property value on Zillow, Realtor.com, and Trulia.com are pretty close, that value is as accurate as it gets. It's, it's a good value. And Redfin, okay, Redfin. So um, Redfin is another one here. So you have Redfin, Trulia, Realtor, and Zillow. Those are the four pillars right now that, that will come up as the top results in the search engines when you check when you Google a property address, okay? And if there's any one of these ones that doesn't come up with the property, there is a good chance that you are in the wrong market. It's probably a rural area. Some people would say, yeah, but you know, it's just a rural area. We should be able to do deals there and stuff like that. You're right. But the fact that there's not a big enough market for all of these popular websites to pick up data on it, that also means there's less, that's just that much less market for you to play with and less that that much less interest in your property when it's time to dispose the deal. You're going to have a hard time. You can see this one, this one says 245 to 271. That's pretty close. That's a busy market where you can sell a house or sell a contract pretty fast if the deal makes sense. But part of the deal making sense is when there's enough data when there's enough people moving properties in that area and there's enough data to back that up when there's not enough data that's when you hear oh yeah but the house is worth 500 i just there's just no comps in the area if there's no comps that means nobody's buying nothing 
<laughs> okay? That's what that means. So these four pillars, Trulia, uh, I said Trulia, uh, Redfin, Zillow, and Realtor.com. This one, let's see what Realtor said. They're all pretty close numbers, and there's more than enough data, okay? Now, if you... Uh, Sean Terry is a guy that I follow like forever, you know, and um, he has a theory that 60% of this value is where you should go. Not this value, the one on Zillow, because that's the most popular. If you notice, it comes up as number one always. Right. It comes up as number one always. So he says, you know what, just use the one on just use the one on Zillow because that's what most people, most people are going to get the most traffic. That's what most people are going to look at as the value of the property. Even if a realtor comes and say, nah, the property is a little bigger. No, it's a little bit less. Whatever. It's like whatever. Once the majority of the market see this number and then you go to the market and you say, nah, but my house is actually worth 450. They're just going to laugh at you for the most part. Okay. So with that being said, actually, in my own personal businesses, we've been generating some leads and I have some of people locking up contract. That's not that's not a fit because they, you know, they're, they're using comparables like a professional comparable market analysis. But the Zillow is saying off because Zillow is accounting for that whole town and all of the negative things that may be going on in the town, even outside of one mile radius. And that does affect your market. Either we like it or not. Okay. So let's just use this number, 273664. Let's go here. Let's use this number. And so let's say after repair, we're not calling after repair value that. Let's just, just this is just temporary. Okay. After repair value or ARV. Those are fundamentals. If you want to win in this game, you need to know what that is, okay? All right, so let's see here. And then we have a maximum allowable offer, okay? So here's what I have to say to people that say that 70% rule is crap. What I have to say is that you can't call something crap to people who don't even understand the simple concept. I was watching another live stream yesterday where somebody was asking, how do I find a deal, all right? That's that's basic. If you're asking that question, you need to join 11dayschallenge.com. That's fundamental. You need to learn that, and then you can ask much more educated questions, right? That's okay. Maximum allowable offer. That means how much you're, you should ever offer on any given property. Right, so you, if a property is what, what did you say, two seventy three, right, on Zestimate, right, two seventy three six six four. Let's just say it's worth two seventy three six six four, right, and um, let's see. All right, so my computer is a little slow. I think I overused it. So you're not going to go in the market and buy at 273 and then say, hey, I'm just going to mark it up. I want to make 10 grand, right? We're not going to just do that and just hide 10 to that. It doesn't work like that because the person you're selling to is going to be like, why would I pay 283 for that value, right? They're going to check the marketplace. They're going to Google the address. They're going to see 273 and say, hey, you Piece of crap is what only 273. Why would I pay 283 for it? Or oh, because I need to make ten thousand dollars. Doesn't work like that, right? So you have to reverse engineer the process. How much do you want to make? Right? You have to reverse engineer that, right? So instead, right, uh the amount you should pay for a property will come up here. Okay, it will come up here, and that amount, traditionally speaking, in the game of real estate investing. Like all the hard money lenders follow this rule. They call it 70% LTV. That's the reason why they follow it. So some random kid who started business two, three years ago, it's not just going to say, oh, 70% rule is broken and then it's broken. No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. You got, you know, now there's a good chance I'm taking him out of context. And that's why I'm doing this lecture. So you can understand that there are some context situation there. And yes, he's absolutely right that market varies depending on your market, depends on what people want in your market. 
But ultimately, if you're a marketer, if you learn the game of marketing, it really wouldn't matter, okay? So maximum allowable would be after repair value, multiply that by 70%, which is the same thing as 0.7, right? It's not just that. So a lot of people think, okay, so let's just say this was, uh, we're going to change this up in a second to what it probably should be, okay? I'm just saying always match it with the Zestimate. If your number is up, Zestimate is something to be aware of. So now, 70% of 273 is 191. No, that's not the end of it, <laughs> okay? Somebody has to pay for this, the $13,000, and it shouldn't be you. And it's not gonna be the person that's gonna buy from you, because remember, you, you don't get to go to them and say, hey, I wanna make $10,000, so you just had that on top of whatever the property is worth. It doesn't work like that. You have to reverse engineer. You have to find deals, discounted deals, so that the deal pays for itself, it pays your fees, it pays all the closing costs, it pays the profit margin that an investor would want to make. So the profit margin, traditionally speaking, is 30%, 30%, okay? So I'm gonna say here, I'm gonna say, um, I'm gonna say one minus profit margin, okay? All right, so I'm gonna say that, and this will be like 70%. Right, let's call that 70%. So instead of putting 0.7 here, I'm just gonna use this cell so I can change it around, right? Is that making sense? But now this has to be, you know, this, this, somebody has to pay for this. The deal has to pay for it. So we have to deduct it from here. So that formula is not really complete until I deduct the estimated cost of repair. So when I was watching the video, he kept saying 70%, 70%, but no one, no one in the traditional, uh, the traditional gurus ever thought just 70%. They said 70% adjusted with the estimated cost of repair, okay? And if you're a marketer, if you learn this game properly, that's usually enough, okay? Now, personally, I 70% is good for a person that's actually going to fix and flip the property themselves, sure, right but if you're a wholesaler you what i was taught in 2005 is to use 65 percent here because that will allow some space for me to make some money okay and now i can only pay 164 i can only make an offer of 164 thousand dollars on the property now this number right here is very important to get this right okay it's very important to get this number right. This number right here. Because if this number, if you get this wrong, it drives everything else, okay? This number right here, if you're a fix and flipper, that means you're actually going to fix the property. You should get three opinions from a contractor in order to determine this number, okay? If you're brand new. If you're already, uh, if you're already in the game for a while and you're, you're experienced, you probably will know how to do your estimate because you have experience. But if you're starting brand new, you should get three opinions, uh, three quotes from contractors that will do whatever work is needed to bring the house up to speed, to add value onto the property. Okay, excuse me. All right, that's how that works. Now, if you're a wholesaler, I have a, I have a tool here called Deal Estimator. Estimator.com, okay, and um, basically, all you have to do is ask the person you're talking to when you're prospecting on the phone, when you're consulting with them, you say, on a scale of low, medium, and high, how much work do you think their property needs? Whatever you, they tell you, take that as the truth, as the temporary truth, okay? You don't have to overthink this, okay? So this tool right here, when you click into maximum allowable offer calculator, all you have to do is put your after repair value here. For this situation, this is 273, right? You're rounding up, rounding down figures, okay? Because you're being conservative, right? So that's 273,000, right? If they say, well, it needs, I'll say medium. Then you put that here and that's $40,000. That $40,000, basically, you can put that here. Some people will come at you and say, 
but yeah, that's not accurate. Well, no one ever said it was gonna act, gonna be accurate. You're just trying to make an offer, an offer that makes sense. When I turned this to forty thousand dollars because they told me it needed medium amount of work, now I'm not going to lock up a contract any more than one thirty-seven. Do I sometimes push the envelopes? Yes, to one forty. Okay, now, um, but never too much, much higher than that. You're not this like this old game. It's not like black and white like that. But there must be some kind of space for people to make money, okay? Um, how much percentage is 137 of the actual after repair value? Let's find out now. This divided by this, right? And I'm going to turn that to a percentage. That's 50%. So it was never 70%, okay? It was never 70%. If you're a wholesaler, I always recommend 65%, okay? This is 50%. Sean Terry said... Sean Terry from uh, Freedom, Freedom, uh, something like that, right? He said, use 50% of this. If people are not willing to talk at 50% of this price, it's probably not a motivated seller and you should probably keep generating more leads. That's why 11dayschallenge.com teaches how to generate massive leads so you can keep talking to people until you find your deal. Your next person you talk to is 99.99% not going to be your deal. Okay, it's about finding the deal among so many. It's about finding the the diamond among so much so much rough, right? So, is that making sense? So, profit margin minus one is about sixty five percent. That's how that your you know potentially you want to make sixty. If you want to make ten thousand dollars, fine. But what's five percent of two seventy three? You're not making commission, so you never want to say that in public unless you're on my webinar, right? That you're making commissions, but I'm just letting you know, this is how you structure a deal. You find a deal, this house, 21 Linden Street, lock it under contract at 137. Why would they want to do that? Well, because they can't afford to hold on to the house. So you're actually helping them, okay? While you're helping them, you help another investor find this deal. The investor will pay you, uh, the investor will probably be willing to pay Let's see what that is. Let's just for the sake of this example, right? 0 0.05. Multiply that by of this. All right? They'll pay you $13,000 for finding deal, possibly more. Okay? It depends on how much they're willing to pay. If you found this deal at $100,000, you could potentially make 13 plus $37,000, $40,000. You can make money just like that. Just because you happen to be marketing long enough, you've done a few deals at $10,000, $13,000, and you're consistent, sometimes big deals will fall on your lap because you're consistently marketing. That's how that works, okay? So the idea that 70% rule doesn't work, no, it always works. It's always worked. There are markets where you can pay up to 84%, okay? But when people say, just go to, with Zestimate, like just go with Zestimate, 50% of Zestimate, that's because they are factoring all of these things in. And then if the person is saying, yeah, yeah, I'll consider that. Can you pay 150? And you're like, 150? Okay, let me do some math. And then you come back and you say, how much work does it need? Need about $20,000. Okay, unfortunately, we do this so we can make money. I would like that the deal pays for that money. If it's going to cost $20,000, I'll cheap him $5,000. Depends on how you say it, right? But I'm going to have to deduct $15,000 from the agreed upon $150,000 that we said earlier. So I'll send you a contract for $135. Boom. Okay. All right. So we got to keep things in context. So let's, let's do a quick comp and see how much this property is actually worth. Uh, 21 lending. Let's go to um, let's go to uh, let's see here. Let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's go, let's let's go switch screens real quick. That's the last thing I want to do right now. If you have any questions, it's a good time to post your question. Uh, A C D, you need a mentor. A C D, you need a mentor. Just go to 11dayschallenge.com. What you need, a challenge, okay? All right, so just go to that link and then get started. Uh, so let me, let me switch screens real quick.
If you have any questions right now, it's a good time to post this because I'll be done in a few minutes. Uh, stop screen. All right, so let's go here. Let's go to empirebigdata.com. All right, awesome. So here we go. So we're, we are going to look at this property 21. So we're going to actually do a market analysis, a quick one, OK? So we have this property, um, 47 foreclosures in that market. Well, New Jersey is one of the highest foreclosure states, so no surprise there. Uh, all right so okay so we're gonna look at this and let's do comparable market analysis real quick okay so uh, this thing defaults like the a range of the actual size of the actual house. This property was one forty eight thousand dollars was purchased one forty eight thousand dollars two thousand and one. That's the last time it was traded. Um, one forty eight in two thousand and one. So, if somebody had called me from this property, this would have been an ideal because right now estimated mortgage balance is $59,000. So if I'm paying 135 for that, they will still be working with $80,000-ish, right? So I'm gonna go here and uh, I wanna use both here because New Jersey is not a non-disclosure state. So I can see everything on the public record. And uh, one mile radius and uh, property class is residential and uh single family new construction i know that area so new construction is not very common in that area so and you can probably see on the column of year built here i do see a 1993 but i see 45 10 and they're all selling three hundred thousand dollars between 250 and three hundred thousand dollars right so that's good so i'm not going to touch the year built if there's a significant amount of new constructions then you want to separate that by 1980 or 1990 okay so let's go by highest price per square footage in this area with the one mile radius we have 406 and this property was built in 1949 1949 1949 so about $400 per square footage i'm just going to pick the top 5 okay and then um and like that okay now we have an average sales price of 324. Okay. 324. Average sales price of 324. Let's let's go put that in there somewhere. Because I'm going to go back to the spreadsheet in a second and I'll tell you how I play around with this numbers. And uh Zillow said 273, right? That 273, I'm going to tell you something in a second. Okay, this is this is this is actually fun. Uh, these numbers are now written in black and white or in stone. You know, it just, just all depends on what the market is willing to pay at any point in time. But you should always estimate for worst case scenario, which is basically last one year history in that location. Okay. And that can also be off, and that's fine, you know. So we have uh, average price per square footage right here. I'm gonna use that as well. You're gonna see how I'm gonna use that in a second. Uh, that's $387.68, okay? That's not average in that whole town or within one mile radius. It's just the average in the top five highest potential, basically, okay? All right. And uh, so now the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take everything out again. I wanna look at the, you know, it's not every time I look at everything, okay? Sometimes I just, you know, you wanna be very quick too. That's why I don't mind the idea of Zestimate. Just Zestimate 60%, okay? Not 50, 60% and say, 
what would you say? Would you be open to a price of one fifty thousand dollars? Okay, let me do some analysis. Let me get back to you. If they say no to that, oh no, it's worth a whole lot more than that. Like, okay, great. Let me send you. Uh, I'm going to send you a report. You just do if you have time and you have the resources. You do some report. You send it to them and make sure you have your contact information, and everything on it, because that is going to represent marketing information for you in the nearest future. If they do realize that they don't have any other choice. Okay, so I'm looking at this property sold for five thirty-five. Okay. Um, however, price per square footage is one sixty-six. So. That means anytime you see that, that means if a house is bigger and bigger in that area, it doesn't necessarily mean it's worth more, okay? In that location, essentially anything above 300 is probably, um, you know, I mean, anything above uh, 3,000, uh, anything above 1,700, right? Uh, like 2,000 square footage is probably not worth building. 2,500 is probably okay, okay? 3,000 is just a big house. In this market, that's not going to get its value, okay? So we're looking at this one. My property, I don't know. I don't know. So if I was talking to them, I would find out how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms, right? So if I look at this 530, I'm not going to pick this one because it's 2006. It's newer construction. This one is 2000 and, uh, 1915, okay? Um, I'm going to pick this one. I'm picking this one. I'm picking this one, I'm picking this one. So now we're looking at $457,000, right? An average sales price based on just the top sales price in that area, okay? I'm gonna show you what I do with that in a second. I'm doing a little bit of overtime because this is an important lesson for you, okay? Okay. Uh, all right, so we got four fifty-seven thousand dollars, and we're gonna go back to the spreadsheet and then work it out. And then work it out. Okay. All right. So let's see here. All right. So there's another thing I want to look at. Depends on the area. I will go and sort. So basically, I sorted this by clicking on the column header by from top to bottom from highest to lowest of sales price. Earlier, I did price per square footage. This time around, I'm gonna do the closest to the nearest house, right? So we have one on 11 Linden Street, right next to the house that sold at 216. I would wanna know that, okay? And if you look at this screen right here, you see that property selling on that block or closest to the property are not worth as much. Actually, they are, 309, right? So if I pick the top five here, all right, now we got 298, okay? We got 298. If I take that out, it's probably 300. I'll use top four. It's top three to top five. Me being a conservative uh, evaluator, I always go with top five, but you only require three comps, okay, in any, for the most part. Okay, so the top three uh, best case scenario based on closest to this property is... Um, 310 okay so now you can see that i'm going to tell you why it's not a bad idea to use zestimate even though zestimate is quite conservative because it's averaging everything in that town in that small town okay so that's something you should pay attention to but it doesn't work against you when you use that to negotiate when you are when you when you use that to negotiate in uh, or let me say when you use that to find deals, okay? The only the, the worst case scenario is that you find a really really good deal because it was estimated based on zestimate. Even though the person that's going to be buying to fix and flip this property knows that they can probably do better, which is good for them and it's good for you because then you get to dispose your deal faster. It's better than over speculating the value of the property. Okay. All right. So let me see here. Let's go. So I'm going to switch my screens back. All right. Okay. So here we are again. Uh, let's see here. Duh, 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 duh. 
All right, so, sorry, excuse me on that. Okay, so here are the numbers. This has got numbers. So this one was based on highest price per square footage, price per square footage, right? This one was based on highest sales price, okay? And this one was based on closest in proximity. Now, for me personally, I like to know how much I can go. Like not just use the Zestimate, but how far I can go. However, I don't want my Zestimate. This property is showing is worth, you know, I always go with the lowest of these three, okay? The lowest of these three is 310. Okay, when I'm negotiating with the with the seller, when I'm negotiating with my buyer, I'm giving them the best picture. As for this house can be worth up to four fifty seven thousand dollars. That's the highest, best use, highest potential, and they may need to add on to the square footage. Who knows, right? Maybe not. Now let me show you something even cooler, right? This price, the the square footage of that house is twelve seventeen, right? Twelve seventeen. So I'm actually gonna insert here. Uh, uh oh, what did I do? Okay, twelve seventeen. So let's put that here. Twelve seventeen, right? That's the square footage of the house. These are numbers you need to understand. Okay. Right, so we got square footage of the house, uh, 1217, right? So in reality, this number is not actually accurate. Now I'm going to make it accurate, okay? Because it depends on the size of the house. Whatever number you want to use, it really, really comes down to the size of the house, okay? So the I have three ARVs here right now, three ARVs, right? And let me reduce this so we can see a little bit better. All right. So this number has not been adjusted for the size of the house. This number, the only way you adjust it is you multiply this average price per square footage by the square footage, okay? And that's that right there, boom. Just multiply it, right? And then you have a number here. But this number seems quite inflated, okay? So if you... Just increasing the size of this house and using this price square footage is not going to help you because I will always go with the lowest of these two, okay? So with that being said, I'm literally going to do a minimum, okay? Minimum of these two numbers. Boom. And this is the ARV, okay? Based on that formula. Remember that evaluating the, the, the value of a property is still an opinion. We're using a lot of data, but it's still an opinion. It depends on what you do with it, and it's ultimately up to what a willing and able buyer is willing to pay for the property. Okay? That's just the bottom line. So let's do the same thing here, right? What is this? Uh, this would be this multiplied by the price per square footage here. And this one is saying 250 if I used highest sales price, this house is way smaller than those properties. And now it's saying that I'm going to end up with uh, 250 in, in average square. So you can see that Zestimate at the end of the day still knows what it's doing. Don't let anyone intimidate you with the idea that, you know, that you don't know what you're doing. Just don't allow it, okay? You know exactly what you're doing. You use worst case scenario when you're negotiating with a buyer or seller. You use best case scenario when you're about to sell the deal. And if you do that, you will win all day long. That's really the key, okay? Now, you don't have to go through all of this analysis. That's the point I'm actually making. You don't have to go through all of this analysis, all right? Um, just keep in mind. Hold on one second, sorry. All right, so we have this one says 319, but we always go with the lowest, okay? So if I was to try to sell to, out of all of these numbers, okay, 
which number is the ARV? It really depends on who I'm talking to, okay? Everyone still has to do their homework. If I'm talking to a seller, they obviously that's going to be based on their motivation. They just want to walk away from the property and I'm going to get them as much as I can get them. Best case scenario for us so I can dispose the deal. If I mark up the price too much and I use any of this higher stuff, that's just additional chances that I would not be able to sell the contract. Okay. Now, if I go with the lowest number here, when I'm talking to them, that will be the 250 out of these numbers, the bold numbers. I'm going to bold them right now. Okay. Now, if you do, if you don't use 250, if you didn't do the analysis I just did with Empire Big Data, right? Um, you can use this 273. Okay. That is still very conservative. Okay. That's the estimate. But that estimate is never going to be your 471 because it kind of factors everything in. Okay. This board number, the highest here is this one. That's this one right here. Let's just make it big. This right here is the highest potential of this property. So somebody may want to come there and have the level on the property, increase the square footage of the house. They want to spend $80,000 on doing that and make the most they can make out of it. They deserve it. Okay. But I will be using this number. Knowing this number, that I have access to this number, I will be using this number. Okay. And this number is what? It's in uh, C18. That's what will be here. Okay. Equals to C18. All right, and my offer on the on the property will this is how much I will be offering. But even if they said, nah, I want 125, no, I want 130, I would know that I have space to make that happen. Does that make sense? That's it. That's all I have for you guys. All right, that's all I have. Uh, any questions? What can I get both of your books? Just go to um smartrealestatewholesaling.com you can see scrolling on the screen okay All right and when you go there uh it's gonna send you an email after you enter make sure you check your spam box your junk box all of that stuff make sure you check it and um, before you move forward, and then it should be your email, and then you have options also. If you want the physical book like this, or you want the audio book, you'll see the options there. All right. Um, thanks, Malik. Um, if I find a deal, can we RV the deal? What does RV mean? Joint venture? You mean JV? Yes, absolutely. So if you have a, a deal for me that you think we should JV together, you want to go to myempirepro.com slash submit. And you have to be open to revealing all of the information. I do 50-50 with my students, okay? So if you have a problem with that, it's probably not going to work. You have to be able to trust me, okay? Um, let's see here. Yes, thank you. Thank you. If you stop by today, please keep sharing the platform. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for hanging out. This is it for this week. I'll be back here at 4 p.m. on next Tuesday uh, with episode number 30. We're going strong. All right. So I have to do at least 100. From data to deals, this is the process, a stage by stage. You need to understand those stages. If you don't understand the stages where you run into problem, you don't know how to troubleshoot, right? And uh, the best way to learn it uh, is literally to go to 11dayschallenge.com. And uh, but I will continue to bring you this kind of stuff if it helps. I, I am happy that it helps. Um, but you want to have a roadmap, okay? And those two things, those are the two, those are two secrets I just discovered that you need to use in your favor: a roadmap, a challenge. Okay, you're human like the rest of us, we get complacent if we don't have something to hold on hold us accountable. Um you know, the chances of failing is extremely high because we have habits, right? But a challenge will put you, will help you, will work in your favor in that sense, right? Uh, so through the challenge, 11 days challenge, you hold. So even if you miss one day, at the back of your mind, you know you just missed something. You can always track yourself. So if it took you 15 days to complete the 11 days challenge or you finished 11 days, perfect. But yeah, it is a drip content, meaning 
you only get one thing to do per day for the next 11 days. At, le at the end of 11 days of completing the process, you have a six-figure running business. Okay, that's the idea. All you have to do is be consistent with that, and you have a six to seven figure business. It's as simple as that. So, uh, you can do that at 11dayschallenge.com. And uh, very soon we'll be back with all of the videos that we always released. Uh, just lately, we've been working on some other stuff and uh, reshuffling and restructuring and things like that. We always have to do that. So, don't be surprised if technology changes things up. But when you understand the concepts, the business is really, really simple. Okay. It's very simple. All right. So hopefully you've been enlightened and educated. I will see you on the next one and peace.